I grew up in Halle an der Saale in the German Democratic Republic. And so I lived in socialism for the first 15 years of my life. And then the war came down and I lived in capitalism. Once I was 12 years old, I took my first ceramic class and I fell in love with the material, how the clay smelled like so much like iron. I was a production potter for four years, which gave me the ability to throw really fast. But then at one point, I got really bored and I thought I don't want to just throw pots. I want to like learn more about ceramics. So I eventually got into the school Burg Giebichenstein in Halle an der Saale. And that's where I studied art. Gus Clark had in 2000 organized the Ceramic Millennium and he um, invited us all to come to Amsterdam and that's where I saw American funk art. And I was so impressed that people could make so weird low-key things out of clay that I went back, I kicked out the wheel out of my studio and I started working like a funk artist. And from then on, it was clear I had to like move to America, live in America, study funk art, and that's how I made my way over here. Eight years later, I'm using the wheel again. In those eight years between, I really thought um, all the time I spent as a production part of making pots was worthless, but then I used um, the wheel throwing ability to create my sculptures. But the whole way was like really stressing the material, the material I was so in love with. I didn't want it to do anything round anymore. I was throwing all those cylinders and then cutting them apart and then laying them flat and then I used them like paper and I fired it flat like paper, but everything made out of ceramic. I still was so hooked on pop art and funk art that everything was very, very colorful. But then through an accident, I used a dark clay body and I unloaded the piece and it looked like it was chiseled in stone, but it had all the throwing lines on it. And I was so mesmerized that I started leaving the clays away. And so I'm still mesmerized by that black clay body, which looks so austere. And the pieces look for me now, like they read like sculpture. And so I haven't gotten over it, so I can feel the skin of the pieces. And then I really forced the figures through and um, I really struggled to make them stand and like to get the positions of them to survive through the kilns and so this is still what I'm working on, technical issues. So I have to trick physics to get my pieces through the kiln. And it's challenging and fun to figure out, but I also lose a lot of work. So one of the assignments I have for myself if I lose a fascinating piece, and I won't work on something if it's not fascinating. If I lose it in a kiln through accidents or it doesn't even make it on the way to the kiln, then I have to build it bigger again. So that's the rule. <laughs>